Hi guys, my name is Galen Elmore. I'm a former foster youth, a current speaker, and aspiring foster care reformist. I want to start today by asking you a question. Have you ever listened to or heard the life experience of a child either in foster care or up for adoption and thought to yourself, how did they get through that? I'm willing to bet that an overwhelming majority of us are able to say yes to that question more than 10 times over. That question and the inevitable response is why I'm so passionate about adversity and resilience, specifically in the foster care space, but in, in our lives in general. There is so much potential within the foster care system that never become realized or obtained. Resilience and grit and determination and perseverance and all those great qualities that make up a successful person, those traits are very present in youth that we know. They're, they're very present in that space and the kids that are impacted by the foster care system and the child welfare system in general. But we rarely equip the youth and the people within that system to harness that ability, to hone in on that potential and use it to benefit them going forward. So having been through the system myself, um, having experienced jumping from home to home, experiencing that hopelessness that comes with not being able to uh, develop attachment to grow close to those that, that you care about and you're supposed to be connected to. While I was waiting in that, the resilience and ability to overcome difficult and adverse situations was the only thing the foster care system ever gave me. And that's why I wanna connect and partner with the system. So those that are in the system, those that are helping the kids that are in the shoes that I was in are able to use the, the awful situation that it is to be uh, without a family, to not have a home, that awful situation and use it to set them up for future success, to set them up for the ability to overcome whatever it is that they may face in their life. So in my research to understand adversity, to, to really come to a point of knowing and, and really becoming familiar with the idea of adversity, I uncovered something that was so simple. As I came across and researched the word adversity, I came across the Latin root word, which is advertir. And simply what advertir means is to turn towards. And so a word that now today we think about a misfortune and difficulties originally was intended to mean something that we turn toward. If we're able to have that type of a response, that type of a mindset and attitude towards difficult situations and misfortunes, then we are building resiliency and, and the ability to overcome adverse situations day in, day out. And that's everyone. That's not just for kids in the foster care system. That's just not for people that work with kids in the foster care system. That is for everyone in life. Because that's one of the few guarantees in our life is that we're going to experience difficult situations. Although it's not just specifically for the child welfare space, I believe it's transformational for those within the child welfare space. And so I, I say that because I didn't understand the power of the resilience that I built up while in foster care. I didn't understand the impact that that could have on my life going forward. I was not able to use this skill and this trait to benefit me until halfway through my high school career. The thing about resilience is if we're not using it to benefit us, if we're not using it to turn toward the adversity, it's going to be used against us. I believe we see that with, with foster youth often in that they have the ability to be resilient. They have the ability to turn toward, but they, they do it with everything. And so even good things and beneficial and positive things are viewed as adversity and rejected or turned toward in an oppositional uh, type of approach. If we don't cultivate the skill of being resilient, if we don't learn how to use it to be an asset, it's going to be a liability. It's amazing and it's great if I have this innate ability to overcome difficult things. But if I'm unable to identify the things that need to be overcame, that everything I face, whether that's a good foster parent or a poor foster parent, whether that's a social worker that has my best interest in, at heart and in mind, or one that's just there because it's a job, regardless of who that person is and what their disposition is for me and how they view them playing a role in my, my future, if we're, I'm not able to identify the difference between those, they're all viewed in the same light as opposition. And so connecting it to the origin of the word, which is turned toward, unless we're able to correctly identify things, everything is seen as something to turn toward. And that's not a positive use of the skill of being resilient. So this is where I believe that children in the foster care system come in, where that skill of resilience and that trait comes up, whether in good or bad situations. 
the inability to identify, is this here to help me or is this here to hurt me? Because all those lines got crossed in my childhood when things didn't end up being the way they were intended to be. We want to continue to develop the skill of turning towards something. We want to continue to develop that and cultivate that for our youth. But unfortunately, that doesn't happen overnight. And so, as I continue down my research and my quest to understand adversity and use it in a way that's going to help the foster care space, I identified what I believe are the three different mindsets of adversity. I call it the three V's of adversity. And that's what I'm here to share with you. The three V's are three different mindsets that I believe are commonly used when people face adversity. It's also connected to their willingness and ability to turn toward the adversity that they face. And so I know these three mindsets for sure were present in my life and as I move throughout my life. The first V is victim. And so I don't want you to get caught up in the word victim. I know that we live in a culture that, that victim shames often, and that's not what I'm saying. I fully understand and, and experience being at the mercy of decisions that other people made. So fully well experiencing being a victim. However, this mindset focuses on the unwillingness and inability to turn toward whatever it is that, that I'm facing. So it's not what happened to me, it's how I'm responding to what has happened. And so and when you're in, the, in that victim mindset, you let things consume you. You let the opposition or the adversity that you may be facing. So in this situation, foster care or not having a family or adoption or all these things, you let that consume you and dictate your decisions. You're not, you're not controlling your, your response to it. You're letting that dictate your uh, position. This mindset allows you to be overrun by the opposition. The mindset diminishes your purpose, your presence, and your power. And so when we operate in this mindset, we are essentially giving up our agency, our ability to have any impact on our situation. Ultimately, this makes it impossible for you to put effort towards the adversity and turn towards what you're experiencing and the experience of others. Turning towards adversity is not present in this mindset. The second V is Victor. Victor sounds like a positive one at the start, but to me, it's, it's the most detrimental because it's the most anti-relational mindset out of all of them. Um, and, and honestly, I believe this is where foster youth operate most of the time. This is where I spent most of my life was operating in the victor stage. And so what the victor mindset is, is the ability. It's, it's the ability to turn toward whatever it is I'm facing. Now, like we talked about earlier, it now is also the inability to correctly identify what is true adversity and what's uh, someone trying to help me or something that's good for me. In, in the victor mindset, you constantly see someone with grit, with resilience, but it's all only for the purpose for selfish gain. So it's, I'm using those that, that may be there to help me and for my benefit, I'm using them as instruments to get what I want, to go to achieve what I want to achieve or, or be where I want to be. They're not people, they're just resources. And so you, you remove the relational aspect of it. And so instead of correctly identifying the adversity, Everything and everyone is something to be defeated. They're in opposition. And, and that's just not a healthy and, and sustainable way to live in life. It's to go about everyone is in opposition. Everyone's an opponent. They are the enemy. They are the adversity. So you display the passion. You display the desire to turn toward it. But you do not take into account anyone else's experience, anyone else's feelings, uh, anyone else's own adversity you are only caring and worrying about yourself. Not only are you not caring about the experience of others, you're probably actively making it harder for the experience of others when they come after you or in the same space that you're in. The last V in, in the three Vs of adversity is the vessel. So the vessel mindset is a countercultural idea. It's an approach that makes the benefit of the individual and the collective one. It brings both together. So I overcome what I can overcome so you can overcome what you overcome. And so it's, it's an interconnected idea of overcoming adversity. So I'm not just doing this for myself. I'm not just doing this for my direct family or the people I care about the most. I'm doing this for everyone so it can better serve them in their own individual paths. And the reason I, I believe this is, is the mindset we want to operate in is because there are so many children and youth in foster care that, that wish someone would care about them even though they're not supposed to. And that's the thing, as you, uh, as you go through the system, you understand there's a lot of people you encounter that are supposed to care about you. You want someone to care about you that's not supposed to. That's, that's what changes things. That's what changes mindsets. And so we need people to operate in the vessel mindset as, as we experience people in the foster system 
so it can have a ripple effect that benefits so many other people. In this mindset, you are cognitively focused on the impact it will have on, on you, but also the impact that it's going to have on the people you know and the people you don't know. It's, it's all encompassing. You care about those you're connected to, those you're not connected to. That, that's the idea. So when I talk about this, I get the question all the time. How do I help the youth that I know, the youth that I work with move through these mindsets? And thinking about that and thinking about my experience and how people in my life helped me move through those mindsets, I came up with an acronym called CARE. To me, it's overly simple, but I think when they come together, I don't know if a lot of people use these four components collectively when they, when they approach youth. The C in CARE is compassion. It's not just empathy. It's not just putting yourself in someone else's shoes and caring about what they're experiencing. It's all of those feelings, but something that's moving me into action. So I, I feel empowered and moved to have a positive impact on that individual's life because I have compassion for them. It's allowing me to be moved into action, into purpose, because I feel those feelings. The A, and this one is super important. The A is authenticity. Too many times there are people trying to be who they're not as they try to build relationships or help youth in the system. That authenticity is immediately taken into account and judged if they can be trust or not. That, that's a first impression type thing. So what I mean by that is be authentic to yourself. This is part of my story. There was a, a woman in my elementary school who was a janitor. Realistically, a janitor trying to help a, a child in foster care, she doesn't have a ton of power or ability to change my situation. Now, she does have the power to just be authentic to herself in the way that she can have an impact on me. And so what she did was she just continually checked up on me. She asked about me. She took an authentic and deep interest in, in how I was feeling and how I was doing. That's super valuable and super important. And I, and I don't want you to miss this. It's being authentic to the way that you can have an impact in, in a child's life. If you're not in a space where you want to adopt or take in a child, don't act like you're going to adopt or take in a child. That, that's counterproductive. And it, it, again, not operating in a vessel mindset, it honestly puts future people that can do that work and, and uh, help them in that way, it puts them in a, in a tougher position. The R in care is resilience. But us as adults, as we try to have an impact in, and have a, a place of importance in the system and in their lives, resilience is important for us. If we're facing resilience and, and youth who are resilient, we need to be resilient ourselves. We need to be able to consistently and um, effectively face whatever it is we're facing. Because again, we're going to see a lot of stuff. There are a lot of ways that youth act out and lash out uh, in a way that, that can wear us down. But we have to be resilient. We have to continue to show up because we know through experience that they're going to continue to show up, whether albeit in a positive way or a negative way, they're going to continue to show up. And so we have to be committed to do the same. So the last letter in this acronym is E, and the E is for empowerment. The reason empowerment is in there is because all too often, uh, being a youth in the foster care system, you feel like you don't have any power. You don't have any agency for what happens to you. And so once we get in a position that people are willing to invest in us in the right way, you have to value and put a priority on empowering them. When we're in a position to have a positive impact and wanting to shift the mindset of the youth that we're working with, we have to value empowerment because that allows them to take ownership, to know that someone cares enough and values me enough to have a say-so in my own life. This is the CARE acronym. This is how I believe we can help youth in the system move from one mindset to the next until we're all operating in a vessel mindset, which is going to make the system that the youth that we work with operate in a much better one. If we as adults, if we as professionals, we as caretakers are operating in the vessel mindset, we are now pouring into youth in a way that is countercultural, that they're not accustomed to, and it's going to transform their lives and how they feel about themselves. I know that you are on the journey to become vessels because this is something that you prioritize, and I appreciate you for that. Take care.